Greetings, B3 Burner here, and what I have for you today is a look at the Utah map. We are done reviewing changes from version 16 to 17, which took place August of last year, and we're now looking at version 18. I unfortunately missed 18 when it was fresh because I was too busy working on videos for 17. By the time I got in on it, the game was already up to version 19 and now 20. But that doesn't mean we can't go back and review what was changed. The major change throughout the version was the lighting and how light worked. And here we're in the BeamNG dev blog, and version 18 came out on December 9th, 2019. And one of the things they touted was improved sky settings for better day-night cycle and lighting in East Coast USA and Italy. But also, I can tell you for a fact that it's taken place in several other uh, maps as well. Third-party maps not so much, but definitely the ones that the developers worked on. And what this basically means, and I'll show you, I'll give you an example of it, is that the color of the sun and the color of the ambient light can still be changed, but you cannot change the color of the sky manually because they have it set so that the optimum color automatically changes depending, depending upon time of day, which is actually kind of a neat feature. That is, so long as you're either leaving the TOD alone for whatever time of day you started the map in, or you're making the adjustment in menu by using the sliders. However, if you go into the world editor and you change the TOD by entering in a new number without running the play button, you could wind up with some really odd lighting nuances, like going from midnight to noon and noon to midnight. And I'll, I'll show you that in just a second, but su to suffice it to say, you have to be careful with that in some of the maps. So let's take a closer look at what they say about lighting and the changes. Uh, you could read it in the dev blog yourself, but since we're here, we may as well talk about it. They go into details about the rendering engine, and I don't completely understand it. So I'll just touch on it briefly. Our ability to perceive light, the human eye's ability to perceive light is different than how light actually takes place in real life. You have linear and then you have uh, gamma or what's really an exponential curve. And you can see an example between it, linear space, gamma space, and we perceive light along the gamma. The difference between those two is what they need to uh, correct for in order to give us uh, what they call HDR rendering or high dynamic range rendering to make the colors look better. Now this does not have to do directly with them changing the color of the sky automatically to suit noontime daylight color versus sunrise or sunset color, but it all comes together. Even the color of vehicles at different times of day is all dependent upon this. And that's all I'm going to say right now about it. So in order to show you what I mean about the lighting changes in version 18, I have to work with the old world editor, or I feel more comfortable with the old world editor than the new one for the time being. I have to go out of full screen mode. As much as I like it, this is the way this is going to work. So to demonstrate what it is I'm talking about, we'll go in a world editor. We will go into level objects and we will go into sky sun sky i wish there wasn't so many things we need to go through and what i will show you is we can change the sun scale and make the sun shine you know pink light green light 
red light or orange light, yellow light, you know, so on and so forth. That is supposedly light coming from the sun. That's the actual color of emitted light. We are going to pretend that that never happened. Okay. The other thing we can change is the ambient light scale. That is the color of light that's in shadow. So you'll notice that where the truck is, let's say, there you go. It's a somewhat normal color where the sun is shining, but where the sun isn't shining, the ambient light is green. Okay. And I just present this various examples. Red. And notice it changes a little bit the color of the ground uh, where, the, where the sun is too, but it changes it more where the shadows are specifically. Okay. So ambient light can still be changed. And let's get rid of that and get back to normal. Fog scale color can be changed. The main thing is ambient and sun. But now, let's try to change the color of the sky, because we used to be able to do it. And look, I'm moving all over the place. I'm changing the alpha value. That used to make the sun lighter, right? Uh, well, colorize amount is zero. Uh, let's change it to red. You used to be able to make a bright, brilliant red sky if you wanted to. Now you can no longer do that. Let's bring up the colorize amount to 5. Right? That's the amount, the multiplier for the amount of intensity in the color change. And you'll notice that try as we might, it doesn't change. Change the hue. Nothing. Okay? That's because the change is now automatic. So let me give you an example of what I mean. We will now go to time. TOD. Pick the time. Right now the time is eight hundredths of a TOD. It's afternoon. It's eight hundredths or eight fourteen minute segments after uh, twelve o'clock. Let's make it midnight, which is 0 0.50, right? Wait a minute, that's an awfully strange night, isn't it? There's the moon. It's definitely a dark sky. But the ground's not dark enough, nor is the fog. We're kind of caught with day daylight textures. What you have is noontime textures because you jumped the gun by changing time instantly without letting it gradually morph into proper adjustment and I said that one of the things they did for version 18 was they made color adjustment automatic well you overrode or what I just did was override the automatic nature of the color adjustment so now I'm gonna have to click play in order to see it instantly do what it's supposed to do there. That's what it's supposed to look like. Now it's a proper nightfall with the moon casting shadows. Okay, the opposite is true if I then go from midnight to 12 noon. Enter. Now everything kind of has a reddish pinkish hue. The clouds are reddish pinkish and more notably you'll notice that the contrast between sun and shadow is way too dark the whole scene looks too dark because it's using the nighttime color scheme in the daytime so in order to get back to normal we have to click play and there you go so it's just a little thing you have to be careful of the way to get around this in the game is to either not change the TOD at all, at least not by the numbers in the world editor. If you are, run play even just for a split second, 
or set a slow play where the shadows don't move too much if you don't want them to and let it run continuously or best bet of all go into the main menu and if you're going to change time change time from over here and the slider will automatically make the adjustment correctly and then all the sky colorings no matter what time of day it is will adjust the proper automatic sky color arrangements that the developers intended. So that's enough about sky color and basically how color and light has been handled and updated starting in version 18. Now we'll get back to the more conventional things that I wanted to talk about to begin with. But I needed to start with that. Okay, let's start off proper now and have a look at things now that we're done talking about lighting. We're major, the major things we're going to look at are the new and remodeled current buildings. There was, in version 18, there was a complete rework of Utah. So we're going to look at the auto repair zone, AJ's gas station, repair shop, convenience store, accelerate, car dealership, 3D windows in the convenience store, and the fact that we can drive into a service bay. We'll, we'll take a look at that. Uh, we'll look at the visitor's center, the tourist area. They've totally changed that around with 3D windows, and you can drive through certain parts you used to not be able to drive through. We're going to look at the new campsite setup, much more extensive with some more props like uh, benches and tents. We're going to look at the new and improved rock crawling areas. Of course, the place is already filled with rocks and I'm not much of a rock crawler. So to me, I'm not going to see anything that looks like a course. It, it all looks the same. But what I'll definitely do is we'll look at the mines, the caves, and the caverns you can drive through, big long tunnels. And finally, we'll check out some unchanged items worth talking about. This high bridge over the low water stream, and I'll show you how you measure the height of the road above the river below. And then the large circular tunnel will uh, measure the total distance from one end to the other and see just how long it is. So that'd be a fun little exercise. So let's first go in and see what we got. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is the auto repair zone. Here we go. Spawn 139 frames. All right. So first thing I want to talk about that I don't like very much is look at the copper color of the chrome bumper. Uh, for some reason, they feel the need to match the silver chromed bumper with the rocks and make it look like anything that's chrome is reflecting the same color as the rocks. Instead, it looks like a copper chromed bumper was attached to the vehicle. And anything that's chromed will do that. You're almost better off using a color keyed painted bumper in such situations. Uh, that's the one thing that kind of annoyed me about this the very first time I checked it out. I don't use Utah all that often, but when I do go in here, that was like, that stuck out like a sore thumb to me uh, for whatever reason. So let's have a look around. And the first thing you'll notice as we go to the front of the convenience store is this is an old style gas station, but it's been updated. Gas all in, AJ Auto Repairs. Gas is $3.09, and look at this. We have some old, good old fashioned deals. AJ Auto Repairs, open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We have a sale on Grip All Tires, limited offer. And AJ Auto Repairs, you can save up to 40%. Don't miss the offer. And they also feature eShocks. It says, get ahead, choose eShock, your trained supplier of something. I don't know. Can't read that. Good old fashioned analog uh, style gas pumps. 
I like the wood palettes. I like the attention to detail with the fluorescent bulbs and the incandescent bulb. Um, I bet this looks really nice at night. Uh, the sliding glass or the opening doors with the uh, end of the shop with the 3D style. I mean, the props are two dimensional, but the fact that you can even go in here is pretty neat with the track lighting. If you look at it, if you look at it head on, you don't know that the props are two dimensional. That's all right. They do a darn good job. And the background of the mountains is pretty nice looking. Okay, so here's the auto repair section. Nothing acts faster than uh, A1 auto repairs. And uh, they're having a tire sale and it looks like diesel oils are 20% off. That's nice. Oil changes, exhaust. And look, one bay you can actually drive into and they actually have the lifts. Total of six bays, it would appear. Definitely the uh, Tire and Service Center. And when you're done, you can pay over here. This is the office. All makes all models. Let's go inside. They even have a couch in the waiting room. And if you have to drop your car off, here's the bus stop. Now out in the middle of nowhere, I don't know uh, how often the bus goes by, though it does look like they have some complete routes and some timetables that I can't read. So that's the story with that. So we've seen the convenience store, we've seen the auto repair shop, we've seen the gas station, and if you decide your car is a complete hunk of junk and you want to replace it, well look, here we have... Uh, Aeolier it auto sales Aeolier it you know what I think I know what that is this is supposed to be these are supposed to be C's not O's accelerate auto sales all right I didn't get the pun it, uh, it was lost on me um, some reflective windows but when you come in no cars too bad they're sold out of in inventory but hopefully they will be getting some new models in soon. So back to our car, and I'd like to point out something that maybe isn't important to others, but it's very important to me. It's mid-afternoon, the truck is more or less facing east, maybe slightly north of east, and look, the sun is to the southwest. Hallelujah, somewhere in the northern hemisphere, southeastern Utah, I figure where they didn't put the sun in the north. Thank goodness, you guys got it right finally. So that's AJ's auto repair, and now we'll take a look at some of the other places they've worked on. And here we go, the information center. All the information we could possibly get about the state of Utah and the city that we are visiting, or the countryside. So let's detach camera and have another look. From the point at which we drive in, it may not seem like anything special, that's for sure. But it's a vast improvement over the one that was here before. It actually looks like you can look inside and see stuff inside the, uh, the window. And in truth, this is pretty three-dimensional. Oh my goodness! Uh, the boxes are not three-dimensional. Boy, they had me fooled. They look good. The shelves are three-dimensional. Interesting, though, you can't see through the window from the inside. I can go... I can see the window looking in from the outside and come through it, but as soon as I do, it becomes a wall. That's fine. Not too worried about some 55-gallon drums. What really is neat is you can walk in through the visitor center and let's see, explore Utah. Experience the breathtaking scenery and the humbling vast scale of Utah. And over here it says Aztec Tours and we have our great American symbol, the bald eagle, taking flight through the caverns. 
Let's see what else we have over here. I enjoy reading these. Uh, Off-Road, Cooper Off-Road Tours. Go where the roads stop and the adventures begin. And you get to use these Gavril Roamers. $180 for adults, $100 for kids. Oh my goodness, those are definitely 2020 prices. Uh, office Information Center. The office appears closed right now, but... Hopefully there's some brochures on the outside. Brochures, tour assistance, and events. More pictures of Utah with the beam NG symbol. They got the broom out in case it starts to get dirty in there. A uh, couple brochures, a map of the area. Let's go over here. I don't know what URS stands for. Utah Regional something or other. More maps, more brochures, more things to look at start your day with coffee for two bucks can't beat that with a stick compared to what you pay at Starbucks though it's probably not as good oh the cafeteria is here let's see what we got we got coffee can't read the first one but we got hot chocolate we've got coffee we've got something and it looks like that's either a mocha or a sundae or or, or some sort of a coke Better not be a Coke for $21, I'll tell you that much. Burger and fries. Can't read the words, but I can tell it's a burger and fries. And oh, we got donuts down here. Something berry cream pie. I'm not even going to try to read the rest of it. But you get the idea. They've done a pretty good job of uh, emulating this stuff. And I wonder if we can go in through the doors. Oh my goodness. There's couches. You can go in here. Wow, there's an actual cafeteria. They didn't really line up the door too well. That's all right. They did, they did well enough. Yeah, you got the cafeteria here with more brochures and postcards and things that you can do and the actual map of Utah the not the state but the uh, the map in BeamNG Drive snacks soda machines candy chips nuts t-shirts souvenirs huh I like it you know, they really knocked one out of the park with this. And what I really like is from the inside, you can see outside. Ah. Okay, let's go back out this way. Well, then, there must be a way to get into the Information Center office. And yes, you can. Let's get up here. You got to kind of get above everything. Boxes on the table. A few more. I guess you, you, it's almost like the cafeteria, but not quite. More stuff over here. No dumping allowed. I would hope people would know that by in today's environmentally correct world. But even today, people can still be so, so careless. So now let's grab our pickup truck and see what we can do. See what kind of trouble we can get into complete with my Utah license plate. Let's read it real quick. It says rocks everywhere and I would definitely have to agree with that. So we're going to come in here. Look, you can drive in here. It doesn't mean they want you to, but you can. You got to be careful not to hit the sides, I'm sure. You can go right through with the truck and drive onto the deck below, right? And get yourself caught in there, but that's not very much fun. What's more fun is launching yourself over the rock. There we go. Now we didn't get very far, but I've seen some people do the launch and go clear over that ridge over there. It wouldn't be fatal, but it would hurt an awful lot. I'll tell you that much. So let's 
clear things and get back home to the top of things. Let's take an outer view of the whole thing. Information center, nice lettering. The top of the information center. It's like the upstairs conference room. I like being able to see things from inside windows, closed windows and aerial lights and things of that nature I think give it a nice touch. Uh, overhead air conditioning units and, and fans and the like. Bus stop for people who didn't rent cars at the airport. Kind of like almost a private room. Not sure what that's for. Let's take a closer look around. South side of the building. More windows. And that's the observation deck for anybody who wants to look at the valley below. And that is quite beautiful. And that is our map. And they've given these, uh, what I presume is uh, fictitious names, Tehachin Plain, uh, Cooper Canyon, Lewis Butte, Firebird Overlook, Prospectors Hollow, and that they delineate uh, main roads from dirt roads, vegetation, rocks, so on and so forth, give them mileage cue, but more importantly, look at that beautiful view. If you think deserts and rocks are beautiful, this is the place for you. This is completely revitalized, and they did an excellent, excellent job with it. The texture uh, sharpness of the signs is very good. That visitor parking is nice and clear. Very sharp texturing in the brickwork, in the stucco, in the shadowing in the texture of the asphalt and even the lines in the parking stalls delineating and separating the parking stalls and I'm not even using the highest settings in the game I'm a bit of a middle of the rotor as far as uh, my settings go because I like keeping my frame rates up above a hundred if I can and uh, that's pretty good so that's the tourist center. Let's now have a look at the campsite. And this is the new campsite. And if we were to quick detach the camera and have a look, it is known as Juniper Grove. Welcome to the tranquil and beautiful juniper grove and this time i'm going to use hood view to drive in here they've really done a good job with the accuracy of things this is where you can have campfires the light poles are accurate Here's the area where the campers can take showers and go to the bathroom. The places where they can throw trash away. Wow, they're even getting environmentally correct out here at the campground. Plastic, organic, aluminum, glass. Everybody does their part today. Oh, look at this. Oh, let's crawl out of the car so that we can have a better look at things. Boy, that's pretty realistic. We got the firewood ready to go. We got the charcoal in the pits. And we've got the grill grates above ready to go. And we got the lounge chairs. Those old 60s looking lounge chairs. And we've got the uh, picnic table under the hot tin roof. Wood textures look excellent. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Did a good job with that, I have to say. Let's climb a little higher and see the top tin roof with the rust marks. Patina, like it, like it a lot. Let's go over here. The slurry sealed cracks in the asphalt. 
very convincing. An open barbecue over there, elevated. Oh, look at this. We have our first camper complete with tent. Can we go inside the tent and see anybody sleeping? Whoa, nobody's sleeping, but we're definitely inside the tent. I love it. That is cool. I never knew you could do that. Okay, that's a really nice tent. Check out this tent. It's like got an outdoor patio covering when you first walk out of it. It still wouldn't protect you from a bear if you really wanted to get inside. Another picnic table, another covered and protected area. I like how they put the yellow protective piping around the electric line. What exactly is this? I would think that it's a hookup for an RV or a recharging station for an electric car. I like these little lamps. I think they're kind of neat. I wonder if they shine at night. They might. Ah, there's somebody with an RV hookup. Let us see. And they've got the camo um, style uh, cover over the uh, tarp over the over the hook that where it hooks into the ah they've got the uh, the wheels covered on the south side or the sunny side of the vehicle to prevent the sidewalls from cracking and fading which begs the question how long do they plan on being there they've properly bagged their trash good for them I wonder if you can go inside here nope too good to be true. That would have been amazing, though, if they let you go inside the camper. It just looks like more of the same. Another tent. A quick overhead. Making sure we didn't miss anything. And that's basically the long and the short of it. Get a quick look at what the campground looks like. And there it is. That's the camping area. And for the antisocial campers that don't want to be with the rest of the group, we've got the independent camping over here. I suppose you could make an argument for the fact that this is technically part of the same campground, even though... It's across the street from the entry gate, but still, they did it really well. And you know what? Let's uh, make it nighttime and see what we see at night. Do any of these lights light up? They do. The lights light up, but they don't cast their own light. Yeah, what we're seeing is we're seeing moonlight reflecting off the ground. Yeah, the light, the light sources illuminate, but they don't cast shadows and they don't cast their own reflective light on the ground. Eh, that's too bad, but that's okay. That's the campground. And I'll set it back to, I think it was about there. 0.08 TOD. And, uh... That wraps up the campground. Okay, so the next area we want to check out is the building site, or what I call the construction site. So let's go over there. And here we go. I suppose that this is an opportunity to run over rebar, basically jump around and make a nuisance of yourself, see if you can wreck your vehicle. I don't know if there's a way to get up here. You might have to F7 and spawn yourself at the top. But assuming you do, try to jump across, jump down, be obnoxious, take a jump here, wreck your vehicle on purpose, and the like. Oh, this is how you get up. I figured you had to start from somewhere. Let's give it a try. Looks like it's uh, three stories high. First thing I want to show you though is when you get out here, you know what the typical glass bus stops look like. This is what a rustic bus stop looks like. I think that's kind of cool that they changed the modeling of the bus stop to reflect the more rural outpost looking section of 
rural desert uh, Utah, and even the bus stop sign has more of a uh, an authentic, I don't know if it's supposed to be wood or metal, but it definitely looks tattered and weather beaten and a little bit more uh, in line with what we see here. So just thought that was worth pointing out. I like the mix of different textures that you usually don't see. This looks like dried up cement or gravel. We have scaffolding. All right, so tell you what. Let us jump in the truck and see if we can figure out how to make an absolute pest of ourselves, shall we? Okay, so the first thing I need to do is figure out how to get up in here. So I would say that as I almost didn't make it, I don't think I realize just how thin this is. Can I fit through here? Yes, I can. And the first thing I have to do if I want to get to the second story is drive up here, right? Then, can I get to the third story from here? Probably not. So I'm going to have to drive across this scaffolding. Yeah, no way to flip around on that side. Hmm. There's too many things in the way. I'm surprised that board will hold the weight of my truck. Okay, so now we are definitely on the second story. Third story, here we go. I think that's the final and highest level. And if I'm not careful... Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. I think this is where I have to make a jump for it. So I'm going to want to back up. There we go, but not too far. Something tells me I'm better off with an ETK or a, something a little bit more powerful. But let's give it a try. Here goes nothing. Ooh. Oh, I made it. Maybe a little better than I thought I would have. Okay. So now that I'm up here, I think I truly am stuck. There's no way to get anywhere else. You sold your soul to the company store when you jumped over there. And that's the end of that. So anyway, let's turn off our truck so it doesn't starve itself of oil and have a look around. See where else we got uh, more bags of cement and pallets. Oh, rebar. Real rebar. I love it. You could take this jump, impress your friends, jump clear into the canyon. Oh, hey, wait a minute. You can also go down. So you've got one, two, three stories up. Here, let's get the car back, the truck back down here. You can go down below in the basement. I didn't know that. Okay, let's give that a try. I don't know how much driving I can do. It looks like a parking area. And wouldn't you know it, I'm stuck and can't go anywhere else. Nah. Does it make sense to just back out the way I came in? Yeah, what the hey. Well, I didn't bust a mirror. That's good, yeah. Okay. So anyway, that's the construction site. What's over here? Anything I missed? Nah. Looks like that's where the crew takes a break. Oh, 
Okay, so let's step back and take an overall look at the construction site. And there it is. I imagine it looked a whole lot different before. But there you go. It looks just a little bit more refined and a little better built and maintained. So that's the construction site. So let's talk about some new and improved rock crawling areas. And you know what? To be honest with you, there's a scenario that sets it up in a very specific section where the rocks are piled up and very challenging. Best to go to the scenarios and check it out yourself. I did a scan around with a detached camera and I couldn't find them specifically. What I will say though is all you have to do is look around and see that you probably have 1.5 square miles of rocks as far as the eye can see. If you can't find a rock to crawl around here, you're obviously not trying very hard. So in the spirit of at least giving it the old college try, I will drop it into low range box and we'll try climbing something. And it's probably not going to be very impressive, but uh, we'll give it a shot. How about this? There we go. Let's try something else. First gear. This is more like dirt hills than rocks. There we go. I'm not climbing the rocks, I'm climbing the dirt hills. You need one of the roamers to climb the rocks. I can't climb that. Okay, take my word for it. There are places where you can crawl rocks and and people who do it better than me. Here, let me crawl. No, I missed it. Here, let's climb this rock over here. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to climb that one. Come on. Back up. Ah, uh, here we go. Let's Let's climb this. There, I did it. This one? Nah. I'm not a rock climber. How about this one? Nope. Well, nice attempt anyway. I can get stuck in the rocks. How's that? Does that count? Yeah, I'm officially stuck. That makes me one, uh, one bad dude, doesn't it? You really need a lifted gavel roamer. Anyway, if you detach, you got rock faces, you got various places where, if you know what you're doing, you can, uh, here we go. This is a terraced rock section that uh, somebody with a lifted, uh, tr uh, lifted Jeep or Gavril Romer could try, Gavril Hopper, excuse me, could try to climb and probably be very successful if they know what they're doing. Like I said, there's scenarios for this and you would have to check out the scenarios and specifically look for the ones that feature rock climbing in the Utah map. It's out there. Uh, I know they released all that uh, December of last year and it was a hoot they had a YouTube challenge for all the big YouTubers that do uh, BeamNG to uh, compete and see who could do it the fastest uh, here's a here's another terraced shelf of rocks climb there climb there and if you're really good you can climb up this dirt face only to you know get more rocks in fact i think this is the slope where the challenge was it was just past here yeah that's the one and it's just to the right of where this freeway makes a quick left turn uh, past this bridge or whatever so um that's rock climbing in a, in a nutshell.
And I'm not even on this map often enough to notice all the neat little hidden things. But let's check this out. There's an airport. I didn't even know this was here. And again, more attention to detail. Let's uh, make a turn over here. And look, it's an old, no dumping allowed, an old Kwansai hut hangar with the good old fashioned radio hookup. And somebody has a tarp over an airplane with unpaved runway bush tires, I guess you would call it. And I assume that's fuel for the plane. And I'm going to attempt to drive through the rocks again. And maybe, just maybe, this is his runway. Or maybe it's a road. I don't know. And if I were a betting man, I'd say it's a road. Because it's not very straight for a runway. But that's pretty cool. Now what I'd like to do is drive off and find some mines and some caves because uh, that's the other neat addition to this map. We just need to find it, so hold on. Well, it took a bit of doing, but I finally found myself a mine entrance right over there. So we're going to give it a try. Things can go from day to night really quickly when you get yourself in a mine shaft. So to make things a little bit more interesting, we're going to get right on the hood of the vehicle and we're going to go off-road. And you'll see that it says right here that we are about to enter a dangerous mine. And you can see the old mine cart tracks buried in the mud. And here we go, and we better turn our headlights on. It's gonna get dark fast. And here we go. Now this part doesn't look bad. Okay, a brief respite of daylight. And then it looks like we're in it some more. Uh, some of these are of varying depth. Some of them have pits. Like that. Which means, oh dear. We kind of got stuck really bad in that one. Now let's hope we don't have any more surprise pits. Now if you knew that was there, you would take a quick running jump. And get going fast, but you know, you don't know. Ooh, like I almost went into the water. Now, if you do it right, you come out the other side unscathed. Like... Here. There we go. And let's, uh... Look back where we were. And we got through it. I only had one casualty where I had to reset myself. Okay, so that's it for mine shafts. Gives you an idea of what they have working now on that. What you need to know with uh, mine shafts is that that's just one of them, and there's probably more than that. Once you go through these enough and learn your way, the challenge then is to remember where you have that pit where it goes down and to get your acceleration up so that you can try to make it to the other side. Okay, so that's it with the mines.
So now that we've checked out all the unique, new, and interesting things that Utah has to offer in version 18, let's go back and look at some of the things that haven't changed, but just for kicks are worth checking out. And one is how we measure the height of a bridge from the roadway down to the river below. And two, measuring the distance, the, the uh, mileage distance from one end of the circular tunnel to the other. And do you care to take a guess as to either of those? All right, first of all, we're going to drive up to the point of this bridge where the arch comes closest to the roadway, right over, if you can see my mouse, right over here. The arch comes up and meets the roadway. What is the, we're gonna park the truck there and then we wanna see what is the distance from here down to here. Now there's two ways we can do it. We can either use our altimeter in both situations and subtract one number from the other and that's what I'm going to do for simplicity's sake because this has already been converted to feet. Or you can grab a third-party object like a cone or a pylon in World Editor and look at its Z value, its height, and free move it from the top to the bottom. It's in meters, so you have to subtract and multiply by 3.281 to convert meters to feet, but we're not going to worry about that. I think we can get away from that. So we're going to park the truck, get a sense of how far down Whoa, can I even steer straight? All right, and there I go. There I go. There I go. And that's more or less the apex of the bridge. Maybe a little further back. There we go. So we're going to stop the truck. Hope you're not afraid of heights. That is sort of withering, isn't it? Withering heights. And we have an altitude of 491 feet. So I'm going to write that down. And now we're going to make our way to the riverbed below. And there's two ways we can do that. We can either fall. We can find a way to drive down down there, though I don't find that advisable, or we can simply F7 ourselves. And yeah, let's try driving. Make it a little bit more interesting. I see a path. Luckily nobody's coming. It's got a longer wheelbase than I thought. Not a very good turning radius, in other words. All right, so we're going to come this way. And it's going to require that I go off-road. And this could be risky, but what the heck. We have to find some way to get down here. And let's see. I'm looking for a gentler path. Ooh, I don't know if that's it. Well, it sure as heck wasn't going to be that. All right. Wow. I had my eye on this. There we go. And I'm stuck. What the heck happened to me? Oh boy. Okay, never mind. We will get ourselves down to this road. F7. Okay, good enough. Turn it around. We're going to find out how far down below I am height-wise. 
There we go. And I'm going to get right... Whoa. Really? I got stuck in a tree. Unbelievable. I'm lucky there. Okay. I'll just park myself directly under the bridge. There. Okay. Well, almost. It's not perfect, but um, it's one of the lowest spots. And it says 338. So, let's do our math. 338. So 491 feet minus 338, 8, 11 minus 8 is 3, 8 minus 3 is 5, 4 minus 3 is 1, 153 feet. Uh, it's, it's not as deep as I thought it was, or as high as I thought it was, but that being said, I still wouldn't want to fall that far. Okay, so 153 feet on the bridge. Now we'll move on to the tunnel. Okay, so I was going to start on the opposite end. It's a circular tunnel, runs all four directions of the compass, and it really is a fooler because you wind up getting spit out, heading the same direction you started, and the point where you exit the tunnel is about a half a mile before you entered it in the first place. So it's like you lost ground and went 10 steps backwards. Kind of a weird sensation. Such a thing would be ridiculous in real life, but in a game it's kind of cool. So, had I started on the other end, I would have been using the inside perimeter tunnel. And I want to see which one has the greatest mileage. So we're actually going to start over here. Let me pull up to the 50 mile an hour sign and get past the shadow. Right about under where it starts, and there. Okay. We've gone 27 yards. Let's restart it. And you can't clear it totally. That's as good as any. And here we go. Now we're going to be careful here because the object isn't to go fast. We don't want to crash the vehicle, we just want to keep on moving. So if we take our own sweet time, that's okay. And that's a fooler, that's not light at the end of the tunnel. That's the limitation of the distance draw of the texture. It doesn't draw it all the way to save on your computer CPU. Okay, now here comes our curve. It's going to come on with a vengeance, so get ready and slow down. <clears throat> I like the graphic representation of the exhaust fans in between the fluorescent lights. That's pretty cool. Now we're curving northeast, and this is not the time for my joystick twist handle to come uncalibrated and lose its sensitivity, or get too sensitive. Now we're headed north, and we're going to curve to the northwest, and when we're facing west for a little bit, we're going to come out the other side. And then you will see daylight for real. And I suspect it's not too long from now. And there it is. Okay, so let's slow down. Slow down. And it, the answer is it's a little over two miles. So we're going to come out. 
I'm gonna look up and about right there 2.1 miles okay that's the answer to how far so 153 feet on the bridge and 2.1 miles on the tunnel now for kicks let's reset the odometer and see how far it is on the freeway from one end of the tunnel to the other on the open side. And for this I'll get inside the truck where it's a little quieter. And there we go. Whoa. This twist handle gets a little rambunctious if you pull it just a little too far over. I suspect it needs calibrating yet again. Oh boy. I would guess it's about double the distance. So two miles curvature inside the tunnel, one mile straight away from end to end on the north side. And we're coming up on 1757, there's one mile. 1760 yards in a mile, and let me stop. And we're right back to where we started. Wait a minute. And right there. 1.2 miles. So 2.1 miles in the tunnel. Here, I'll write this down in the tunnel. And 1.2 miles on the open freeway north side of tunnel. North side of tunnel. Interesting. Sometimes it's fun to get data and stats about mileage, distance, height, things of that sort. At some point I'd like to go into uh, some of the city maps and calculate how tall the skyscrapers are and see which one is the highest. We'll maybe do a video on it. Anyway, let's bring our map back down. Or not map, our view. Get on out of here. Cross the freeway. Get ourselves back over on this side. Pick a good place to come to a stop. Moab 54 West Rock Canyon. And with that, I'm going to close it out. This was Utah USA version 18. Thank you for joining me. And uh, what are we going to do next? I have no idea. I like to kind of keep everyone on their toes, keep myself on my toes. I have no idea. Anyway, though, thank you for joining me and you have a good night.